Hello everyone, it's Tracy. Welcome back to my channel. Thanks very much for joining me. Today I'm doing the assembly tutorial for the tape roll holder. This project has been designed by Nicole Silhouette here on YouTube and I shall link her YouTube channel in the description box below. The tape roll holder is available as a digital cutting file in Nicole's Etsy store and it's also available as a cutting die set in Becky's store and I shall link both of those in the description box below. For today's tutorial, I'm using the digital cutting file, not the die set. Before I get started on the assembly tutorial, I just wanted to show you the listing that's in Becky's store for the cutting die set. And you will notice with the cutting die set that there are some extra pieces that Nicole has included in the die set, so that's a bit of a bonus for you. I think there's even a tassel there and there's some sentiments and some other decorative pieces. There are also some decorative panels included in the die set that I don't have because I don't have the die set and I'm using the digital cutting file today. And the parts I'm talking about are the decorative panels there that have the crisscross patterns on them. They're not part of the digital cutting file, but they are included in the cutting die set. So I just wanted to be clear on that. So as I said, today I'm using the digital cutting file. I have all my pieces cut out, so we'll get started and I'll go through those with you now. So for the tape roll holder box itself, the outer box, we need a left and a right side. So I have one of each of those here. This is the front, that's the top, and that's the bottom edge. So I've got a left and a right side there. This piece here is the front piece, and that will get attached to that like so. Then the next two pieces here are identical, and one is the back and the other is the base. And you can see where I've put the double-sided tape on the glue tabs. Next up, we have the pieces that make up the dividers. And they look a little bit different to the side pieces in the fact that they have glue tabs. So for however many dividers you decide to have in your tape roll holder, you're going to need two pieces, two left, oh, sorry, a left and a right piece. And they will get stuck together and the glue tabs folded out. So I'm having three in my tape roll holder. So I have got six pieces for my dividers. And then I have the decorative panels here. So I'll put those to the side for now, as well as the divider pieces, and we'll get started on putting the actual box together. So I'm just getting sorted out here with my pieces. I have the back piece, the base piece, the front, and the left and the right side. And to begin with, I'm just going to take one of those rectangle pieces. It doesn't matter which one, they're both the same. So I'm just getting one here, and it's going to go like this on my cutting mat. So I'm going to have the left and the right side on each side of that rectangle piece with that shorter glue tab where I'm about to indicate, that's the bottom. And there's no glue tab at the top there. So I'm just going to remove the backings off the adhesive and join the right side to that rectangle and be as precise as I can and do the same thing with the left side. Just attaching both of those to that piece that is going to be the back. And when you fold it in like so, this is how it's going to look. Next up, I'm going to attach the base, which is the leftover rectangle, and I'm going to attach the end that does not have a glue tab to the glue tab that's on this, the back piece that we just, uh, we just put together. Then I'm going to take this front piece and I'm going to attach it to this end here, like so making sure I'm aligning it up as best I can and then I'm going to close up the shape but just removing that backings off there and joining that front piece to that side next up it's time to close up the base and I'm just removing the backings the shorter glue tab gets attached to the front as I'm about to do here and then the sides just tuck in now you don't have to do it in this order if you do not wish. You can do the sides first and then leave the front to last. It's entirely up to you, whatever's easier. Now because I've used double-sided tape here, it wants to grab it before I want it to. So if you want to, you can use glue to put this bit together. I'm just using double-sided tape because it's easier for the tutorial and a little bit quicker. Using glue would give you a lot more wriggle room. Then I'm going to take my bone folder here and I'm going to burnish along the glue tabs to make sure those glue tabs get a good stick. 
So with the exception of the dividers, which we'll do shortly, the outside of this tape roll holder box is complete. It's not a very difficult box to put together. So I'm going to go ahead now and I'm going to put my decorative panels in place on the outside of the box. And I'm using paper from Bella and it's called Cascade. It has flowers on one side and a brick wall pattern on the other side. And I think I'm just using up the last of what I had in my stash on this tape roll holder. What I did think about when I was putting this together is if you have got busy papers in your stash, something that's got a lot of pattern in like these flowers, those papers would be ideal for this tape roll holder box. You may not want to put lots of embellishments and things on this particular box because of its functionality. You're going to be in and out of it with your tape rolls. So busy papers on this tape roll holder box would be perfect. You can of course embellish it up with whatever you like, but I just thought it would be an awesome use for those papers that are a little bit more busier that sometimes we struggle to know what to do with. But that's just my opinion, of course. You can put and decorate your tape roll holder box any way that you like. I just thought I'd share an idea. So I'm just sticking the panels in place here, making sure that they're all nicely aligned and you can see that I always use glue for my decorative panels and that way I can get them into position as precisely as I can. So I'm just putting the back panel in position and I'm looking at the bottom of my tape roll holder box and I'm deciding that I'm not going to put a decorative panel on there and I'm just going to leave it white. You can of course put one if you like, it's up to you. So I'm going to put the panels for the left and right side on the inside. So I'm just getting those. I was going to do it later, but then I've decided it's going to be a lot easier to do it now than try and do it around the divider pieces. I also don't put a decorative panel in the actual bottom on the inside either. You can if you like, but you're not really going to see it. I think I was deciding there to do the brick pattern <laughs> on the other side, but then I went, no, no, I just want the flowers. So I'm just getting that panel put into position. As far as the back of the front and the back of the back go, or the front of the back go, I will share a trick a little bit later on on how I put those in place. So I do put some decorative layers on that edge and also the front, the back of the front. So we'll talk a bit more about that a little bit later. So I'll move on now to the dividers and before I get these sorted, I'm just making sure that I've got a left and a right side of all of them. So I'm having three dividers in my tape roll holder. So that's six of these pieces and they're going to get glued back to back like so. And that will make the dividers stronger. And so that we have a glue tab that opens out on the three sides like so. And that's going to make it easy to attach to the inside edge of that tape roll holder box that we just made. So I'm just making sure that that's all getting a good stick. And that's how each divider goes together. So however many dividers you want in your tape roll holder box, you need two of these pieces and they get joined together like so. With the glue tabs folded out. And it will sit in the tape roll box like so, attached with the glue tabs. Now I'm sorry, I did lose a little bit of footage here, but all I did was I went ahead and put the other two dividers together and I stuck the decorative panels on. It's a lot easier to do the decorative panels before you put the dividers in. It's just easier. And that way you're not trying to put the decorative panels in place in a narrow area, if that makes sense. So I did go ahead and put one in already. Like I said, that was in part of the footage that I had lost. I don't know what happened. I think my daughter came in to talk to me and I pressed pause and then didn't press record again until I'd already filmed a little bit before I realised. So I do apologise for that. So I'm just showing here that I've got one tape roll in there. And if you only wanted to use two dividers, you can fit a thicker roll in. And then you have another one that's a little bit thinner. 
it's entirely up to you. You could have just one in the center and that way you could have two thicker rolls. It doesn't matter, however you want to do it. I'm using three today. Mostly the rolls I use in my craft room are the quarter inch and the one fifth inch size. So that's what I'm making my holder for. I also use a tape size that's just a little bit smaller than half an inch, but it's wider than a quarter of an inch. So I'm trying to cater for that too with this tape roll holder. And you can measure this with a pencil, make pencil marks if you like. I'm just doing mine by eye. So I use the tape roll and then I'm just eyeballing it. You can measure it if you want, however is easier for you. So just make sure that it's straight. And mine again is just straight by eye. So I'm just checking to make sure I'm happy with that positioning and that's adhered to the back, the bottom and the front wall by those glue tabs. So I'm just making sure that that tape rolls fitting in there nicely. Then I'll move to the next tape roll. I'll just put it into position. I'm going to put glue on these glue tabs like so on all three sides. And I would definitely recommend using glue here over double-sided tape. The glue definitely gives you the wriggle room so that you can make sure that it's straight and exactly positioned how you want it. And you can see here I'm spending a bit of time fluffing around making sure this is straight. In the end I had to take that tape roll out because it was in my way. So I'm just making sure that that's in position how I want it. And then I'm going to press down on all of those glue tabs with my burnishing tool. Bone folder, I should say. And that fits in like so. And then I'll do the same thing for the last one. Just pop it into position, get a bit of an eyeball on how I want it to look. This is for my thinner tape. I'm going to put glue on the glue tabs and then attach it inside the tape roll holder box. It's got my roll of tape there as a guide, but it does get in my way, so I'll take it out. And this is why it's a good idea to do your decorative panels before you put them in, before you put these dividers in. As you can see, you don't have a lot of room to get your fingers in. So I'm just making sure that that's straight and it's where I want it before pressing down on the glue tabs. I'm just going to take all the tape rolls out and then press down with my bone folder onto the glue tabs. Making sure everything's getting a good stick. Yeah, so I'll just speed this up a little bit because I do spend a little bit of time fluffing around here, making sure I'm happy. So there's our dividers in place on our tape roll holder. Just making sure that that last glue tab is down and that there isn't anything moving. For the next part here, where I'm going to talk about the inside of the back and the inside of the front, you can put your decorative panel in place before you put your dividers in this decorative layer. But what will happen is you will see the glue tabs over the top of your decorative paper. And if you don't like the look of that, you can get your decorative panel and do what I'm doing here. I'm just lining it up on the outside and I'm making pencil marks as a guide. And I'm going to do that both ends. And then I'll cut these panels down into strips. And the strips will be cut narrow enough to fit in between these dividers and will cover the glue tabs, giving it a nice, neat, finished off look. Alternatively, you don't even have to put these decorative panels on the inside edge of the front and back if you don't want to. You don't have to do it like this and you don't have to put any in at all. It's entirely up to you. It would look perfectly fine just with the plain colour cardstock that the tape roll holder has been made from. In my case, the white cardstock. It looks perfectly fine, just left white. You can decorate your tape roll holder any way that you like. So I've got my finished tape roll holder here and it's ready to put my tape rolls in. So I'm going to bring those in and put them inside my tape roll holder. 
So I can fit four rolls in this using the three dividers. And you can see I've got different thicknesses of tape there, the four most common that I use. And I've got my ruler here. This is the one fifth. That's the quarter inch. The next one is the one that's just under half an inch and the one on the end is another one fifth. Another idea that you can do with these tape roll holders is you could join two together and you could have more storage for your tape rolls. You could join three together, you could join four together, you could have a whole bank of them with lots of storage for lots of tape rolls. It's entirely up to you, the options are endless. So that's my tutorial finished for today. I hope you've enjoyed watching and that you feel inspired to make one of these tape roll holders. They're not that terribly difficult to make and they make a great storage solution in your craft room. They also would make a terrific gift for a crafty friend. Don't forget to check the description box down below for the links that I've previously mentioned. And if you'd like to subscribe to my YouTube channel, I would really love that too. Thanks very much for watching today. Have a great day and until next time, it's bye for now.